Hello everyone, welcome to my channel Code with Ease. From today we are going to start another primer series called the Sorting and Searching Primer Series. A few days back only I had put out a video making the announcement on the same. If you guys have not watched that, please do, I am going to link it up above. So in that, apart from making this announcement, I have also shared some insights on software engineering in general, coding, data structure algorithms, future roadmap of the channel and much more. So please do watch it. So as part of this series, we are starting with the very first sorting algorithm, which is called the bubble sort algorithm. So what we have done is this algorithm in itself, we have broken this in several parts and we are going to have two part series of this for bubble sort algorithm. In the first part, we are going to talk about what the algorithm is, a brief overview of that, how it works, a dry run using an example. In the second part of the series, however, we are going to deal with the code aspect, like what is the iterative solution, the recursive solution of solving bubble sort, and also an optimized way of solving the same. So these three things we are going to cover in the second part of the series, along with the related time and space complexity. So that's the plan for this bubble sort algorithm as part of the series. So stay tuned. So let's begin. Hi, here's a brief introduction for the ones who are new to the channel. The objective of Code with Ease is to make problem solving and programming simpler. If you are someone who wants to become a great developer and wants to level up their skills, data structures and algorithms is indispensable and you need to form a solid foundation of that. And this is exactly where we come in. Because we post topic-wise video explanations in Java on various coding interview questions that can not only help to crack the coding interview, but also help to improve and refine the problem-solving abilities as a developer. And finally, here is the USP of our channel. We code every solution live, we do not copy-paste code snippets. We start off by clearly defining the problem statement, the given inputs, the required output, time and space complexities. We also then discuss the brute force way of solving any question without jumping on to the solution and then gradually move on to the optimal solution. We try to use online whiteboarding wherever applicable to explain the approach and the concepts. So that is all about us. So if you guys also want to be a part of this journey, do support us by subscribing to the channel. So with that, now let's get back to the question. So now starting with the overview of bubble sort, it's a sorting algorithm as we have discussed earlier. But let's first understand what is sorting, what is algorithm and what in general a sorting algorithm does. Sorting is a concept of rearranging items or elements in certain data structure in a certain order. Like if I say a bunch of numbers, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, if I write 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, I say that it is sorting in an order. What order? In an ascending order or in an increasing order. Similarly, if I write 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, I can say that is also sorted, but it is sorted in a reverse order. So simple thing, what is sorting? Rearrangement of items in a certain order. Certain order. Secondly, what is an algorithm? As we know, in simple words, it is involving a set of steps to solve a certain problem. Now, if we join these two, a sorting algorithm is nothing but a set of steps in which it is trying to rearrange those elements in a certain order, whether it is an ascending order or it is in a descending order. In most examples, the default order is always ascending, but we can also be told to sort it in a descending order. Coming back to this, we are saying that it is an in-place sorting algorithm. Now, what does this in-place word mean? So, in-place simply means we are not going to use certain, we are not going to use any extra space to sort this. We are going to modify the same array itself. That is why we call it as an in-place sorting algorithm. Secondly, bubble sort is also commonly known as comparison sort because it follows the philosophy of compare and swap. Bubble sort in general is a very simple algorithm, but it is very slow. It is not work, it doesn't work well in real world use cases because of its time complexity. The worst and the average case time complexities of bubble sort is not quite good and hence it is also not suitable for larger data sets. Like if you want to sort hundreds of thousands of numbers, bubble sort doesn't work well. Why? If anything, any algorithm doesn't work well, what is the primary cause? Complexity, time and space complexity. In case of bubble sort, the time complexity in case of average case and worst case is not good. It's in order of n square. Anyway, we are going to cover the performance part of this in the second part of the series, but just an overview. So it is not good for large data sets. We are also going to later on learn about the more efficient algorithms such as merge sort and quick sort. So how this algorithm works, we are going to do a whiteboarding to understand that. But just the main highlight of this algorithm is firstly the philosophy of compare and swap. Secondly, the largest element, the next largest element is always going to be pushed at the end of the array in every iteration. We are anyway going to see that in the upcoming whiteboarding to understand that. So that is the major highlight of how this algorithm works. That is the intrinsic part of this algorithm, so to say. So now let's move on to understand how this algorithm works. So in this we are going to see what exactly bubble sort algorithm does, what is the internal working of that algorithm and then we are going to do a dry run on one of the inputs. So this bubble sort has there is a philosophy that it does two things it compares the elements plus it does a swapping 
So this is the philosophy of bubble sort. Another few things to note is there will be two loops used in bubble sort. Hence the time complexity is order of n square. And there is also a term called passes that we used when we described this algorithm. Passes are nothing but the number of iterations. So when we talk of nth pass or n minus 1 pass, we are actually talking of how many times the loop is occurring. So that is what we call by this term called passes or a pass in bubble sort. So these are some of the basic terminologies related to bubble sort that we wanted to discuss. Next thing is how it works internally. As you might have understood from the presentation earlier, that it is going to push the largest element or the smallest element, whatever the case may be. It will push the largest element to the last, to the last of the array. So in that way, basically, the largest element is bubbling up to the top or bubbling up to the last. So that is where the name comes, bubble sort. Okay. So let's say we have an array like this, 3, 7, 6, 4, 5, 9, 2. The largest element in this array is 9. So in the first pass, in the pass number 1, this largest element should get pushed to the last. Means this 9 should get pushed to the last. Then the second largest element should be over here. Then the third largest element should be over here and so on. In this way, it will get sorted in ascending order. That is the entire logic behind this algorithm. Let's now take a look at the algorithm. So there are two loops. So the loop number one means the outer loop is going to keep track of the number of passes, like the number of iterations or how many times the loop has to run. So this outer loop keeps track of the passes and it runs till n minus one times. So we can say n minus one passes. So the responsibility of the outer loop was to keep track of the passes. Now coming to the inner loop, what is the responsibility of this? As we mentioned earlier, there is a compare and swap philosophy of bubble sort and that is what is being taken care of by this inner loop. So this inner loop is going to run from zero index to the last unsorted element. What is the last unsorted element and why do we do like this? So this is critical. This is what we have to understand. As we can see, in the first pass one, like we said, it is the largest element is going to reach till here, 9. So 9 will be over here and this is the correct position. Followed by the second largest element that is 7 is again till the correct position. Now at the end of the pass 1, if 9 is already over here, in the second pass, do I need to check till the last? No, because 9 is in its correct position. I should be checking from 3 to this n minus 1. Successively in every pass, I have to reduce my sorting space by 1, 1 element by reducing that by 1, 1 element from the back. So that is why we are saying we have to move from 0 to last unsorted element. So in the first pass, it should be from 3 to 9, like this space, then it should be from 3 to 5, then 3 to 4, like that. So the second the inner loop is essentially that is why running from 0 to the last unsorted element. Within this, within this loop, what we are checking, we will have one condition. Why we need this condition? Because we have to do the comparison and the swapping. So we will say if j, so what is j? j is any element, like in every pass, we are checking every element. Every like the first and second element, then the second and the third element. So in that we are saying if j, if j is greater than j plus 1, means the first and the second element, then second and the third element and so on. If this condition is true is when we are going to do the swapping. So yeah, that's it about the inner loop's responsibility. So outer loop will run and keep track of the passes. Within that, the inner loop is going to have, it's going to firstly run from 0 to the last unsorted element. Then it is going to do this check. If j is greater than j plus 1, then it is going to swap it. So that is all about it. If also because this is a in-place sorting algorithm, so we don't have to return anything. We are sorting the array itself. So at the end, we just have to print out the array and it should be giving us the modified array or the sorted array. So that is about the algorithm and the inner working. Now we'll do a dry run of this. So I'll just copy this elements, whatever we had, three, seven, six. So we'll use two pointers to denote one for the i for the outer for loop and j will be for the inner for loop. So this i is going to run like for n minus 1 passes. Now j, what it will do is it is going to run till the last unsorted element. So we'll see, j starts from here. 3 and 7 is fine because j is not greater than j plus 1. So j moves forward. j is over here. 7 and 6. 7 and 6 does not look okay. So the swapping will happen. So this will become 6 and this will become 7. Again j moves forward. 7 and 4 also does not look right. So this will become 4 and this will become 7. J moves forward. 7 and 5 is not okay. So 5 will come over here and 7 will be here. 
then 7 and 9 will be compared which is okay 7 is smaller than 9 then j comes over here finally 9 and 2 not okay so 2 comes here and 9 goes here finally as we can see this was pass number 1 in at the end of the pass number 1 the largest element got pushed to the last or it bubbled up to the last so that is why we were saying in the first pass the largest element will find its correct position so at the end of the first pass this is how the array looks 3 6 4 5 7 2 and 9 so now this will be the starting point for the pass number 2, the second iteration. 3 and 6 is fine. 6 and 4 will be compared. So this will become 4 and this will be 6. 6 and 5 will be compared. So this will become 5 and this will become 6. 6 and 7 is fine. 7 and 2. Okay. So it will go only till 7. 7 and 2 does not look okay. So 2 will be here and 7 will be over here. Like I said, it will go to the last unsorted. Now 7 is in its correct position. 9 was anyway in the correct position. Now how does the array look like? At the end of the second pass, 3, 4, 5, 6, 2, 7, 9. So this is now going to start the pass 3. So 3 and 4 is fine, 4 and 5 is fine, 5 and 6 is fine, 6 and 2. So 2 will be over here and 6 will be over here. Now as we can see, the third largest element got pushed at the last. 6 is here, 7 and then 9. So this is the end of the pass number 3. Now pass number 4. So, we went till here first, then we went till here first, then we went till here. Pass number 4. 3 and 4 is fine. 5 and 2. So, it will be 3, 4, 3, 4, 5, 2, 6 and 7, 9. So, 3 and 4 is fine. 5 and 2. This, the swap will happen and this will become 2 and this will become 5. So, as we can see, slowly, slowly, all the largest elements are getting pushed at the last. Next, 3 and 4 is fine. 4 and 2. The swapping will happen. So, it will be 3. 2, 4 and rest as usual 5, 6, 7, 9. At the starting of pass number 6, we will have like this. So here 3 and 2 is not okay. So it will be 2 and 3. And then 4, 5, 6, 7 and 9. So finally we have sorted all the elements in the correct order in the ascending order rather. So in this way this was the dry run in which we have seen how the outer group is keeping track of all the passes. By the way this 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 whatever I have written these are the passes, number of passes, which the pointer called i is going to keep track of. Okay. And the j pointer is going to do the traversal inside the array, do the comparison and then the necessary swapping. So this was about the, the walkthrough and the dry run. Next, we would see the iterative and the recursive solution. And along with that, we would see the optimized approach of bubble sort algorithm. Do let us know in the comments below if you guys have any questions or doubts or you want to share any feedback on this video. If you have enjoyed the session so far, do hit the like button so that this can reach out to many more people. And if it does, it just gives us enough motivation to put out more such content. Also, if you are looking forward to more videos like this, please don't forget to subscribe to the channel and press the bell icon next to the subscribe button to never miss an update on our upcoming videos. Thank you so much for watching.